Today we embark on an exhilarating adventure aboard this awe-inspiring mountain railway located high in the Indian Himalayas. Join me for this extraordinary journey that will leave you in absolute awe. Welcome back to India. I am beyond excited to share this video with you as it has been a long awaited dream of mine and let me assure you, it did not disappoint. Our journey begins at the start of the UNESCO World Heritage Site Railway in Darjeeling, nestled amongst the majestic Himalayan mountains and concludes in Siliguri, a bustling city in West Bengal with a population of 2.2 million people. Darjeeling Station opened in 1881 after the 610mm or 2 foot gauge line was completed, just two years after it was commissioned. Inside the station there is a staffed ticket counter in this waiting room come concourse which also has timetables and information on the railway. As we step outside, our eyes are met with the first glimpse of the charming toy trains that traverse this route, endearing to locals and visitors alike. Unfortunately, the weather today is overcast and sombre up here at an altitude of 6,800 feet above sea level, with temperatures only around 8 degrees C. At the far end of the station, we discover the depot responsible for maintaining the DHR trains, including the adorable steam locomotives that were once the backbone of this railway. Nowadays, these steam engines only operate short joy rides from Darjeeling to Gum, as well as the holiday and charter trips. Within the platform area, you'll find a small shop a model railway and additional benches for passengers awaiting their train. Due to a minor issue with one of the coaches, our train reverses into the platform approximately five minutes after our scheduled departure time. The locomotive that will haul us on this mesmerising journey is this Class NDM6 diesel locomotive number 601. These locos were introduced in the year 2000. They have 335 horsepower and a maximum speed of just 20 kilometers an hour on this particular line. Now, let's delve into the details of our leisurely route from Darjeeling to Siliguri. After consulting with the conductor, we are directed to the rear coach despite already having assigned seats. There is no level boarding and the seating is all airline style in a 2 plus 2 layout. Usually there is one air conditioned coach and one non air conditioned coach on this train. However, today the air conditioned coach is out of service. Personally, I find it preferable as AC is not required in this cool weather and it allows for better filming opportunities through the open windows. Take a moment to admire the intricate wood ceiling of our coach. It really adds a touch of elegance to the interior. We finally depart at 09.15, approximately 15 minutes behind schedule. While the distance from Darjeeling to Siliguri Junction is only 80 kilometers, the scheduled travel time is a whopping 7 hours and 30 minutes. This non-air conditioned coach, somewhat confusingly called first class, is actually a lower class compared to the air conditioned coach known as AC chair. The fixed price for a single adult ticket is as follows. First class, 1400 rupees. AC chair, 1500 rupees. To book your tickets, you can buy online with Indian Railways or booking agencies such as 12Go or Baolao. 
It is advisable to book early as tickets tend to sell out quickly with sales opening 120 days prior to travel. Level crossings aren't a thing up here. To cross a road, the train just blows its horn, lots, and the cars usually stop. If you want ad-free early access to every video, great perks and to help me do bigger and better reviews, then become a channel member from just £1.99 a month. Just click the link above now or in the description of every video or the join button below. Thank you. The initial part of the journey takes us through the urban areas outside of Darjeeling, running alongside the main road giving us a close-up view of the passing traffic. Let's explore the seating arrangements on the train. There are straps and handles available to hold on to during shaky moments, although the ride is generally smooth. The train features windows for ventilation and this also offers great opportunities for capturing amazing camera shots. The non-reclining seats provide adequate padding, headrests and armrests although legroom is limited. There are no tray tables, power sockets or indeed toilets on board, but more on that soon. This train journey stands out of one of my most memorable experiences to date. I've never been wowed like this on a train before. The route includes three spiral loop sections, allowing the train to quickly gain or lose altitude within a small area of land. Here stands the Batasia War Memorial, dedicated to the Gorkha soldiers who protected India's independence. On clear days, breathtaking views of Mount Kanchenjunga, the third highest mountain in the world, can be seen, reaching a height of 28,169 feet. The unguarded road crossings provide a unique experience not present in a lot of the world, especially when viewing from the rear of the train. Although there are over 150 of them on the route, accidents are rare due to the slow speeds. When sharing this experience on social media, some Europeans expressed shock while many others saw it as just a common occurrence. Gum, situated at 7,218 feet above sea level, marks the highest point on the line. For those taking the steam joy rides from Darjeeling, this is the final destination. Gum also houses a small railway museum which can be visited for free as part of these organised trips. If you don't want to miss more of these exciting Indian adventures, be sure to subscribe. An upcoming video soon will feature the luxurious Tejas Rajani sleeper train. The next site on the journey is one of the many cable car systems built during the British colonial era to transport goods across the mountainous terrain. As I said before, there are no toilets on board these trains, but there are plenty of stations where you can get off and use their loo. Just tell the conductor and they'll wait for you.
Another interesting aspect is the exchange of paperwork or items between station staff and train crew at various stations along the route. There are also no conventional signals on the DHR. This line utilises token exchanges and communication between stations to ensure train safety. Additionally, with the train operating at relatively slow speeds, there is ample time to stop safely in case of any unforeseen issues. The entire line follows a single track with strategically placed passing loops or reversing sidings. At Tung, we encounter a DHR charter steam train coming from the opposite direction. We move forward, the points are changed, and then we reverse into the siding to allow the northbound steam train to pass. Shortly afterwards, we're on our way again. To check out my video on India's homegrown flagship train, the Vandabharat Express, click the link above now. Unfortunately, the weather continues to be unfavourable, but as we descend to lower altitudes, the views will start to clear up, offering breathtaking sights. At Kursong, our southbound train needs to pull past the junction, change the points and reverse across a busy main road into the dead-end station. This manoeuvre requires coordination from many railway staff to safely manage vehicles and pedestrians. During a brief stop of around 10 minutes, passengers can enjoy a much needed break for food, drinks and using the toilet facilities. If you are sensitive to loud noises or prone to headaches, it's advisable to have earplugs handy since the horn is constantly sounding. Switchbacks, also known as Z-turns, are also employed to quickly change the train's altitude. We pull past the initial set of points which are then changed. We then reverse down the middle section and repeat the manoeuvre after the bottom set of points.
This process is repeated at four switchback sets along the DHR route. The weather begins to improve, revealing stunning train window views of the Himalayas. Here we meet the northbound daily service from New Jalpaguri and Siliguri Junction. There is one service in each direction per day, with a second one running three times per week in peak season. They run together for parts of the route and then split up due to infrastructure restraints before the switchbacks. A town with a population of 1,000 was established to support the DHR Railway Workshop which opened here in 1925. At the station there is another 10 minute stop and also a small shop, a hotel and more toilets. An hour before arriving, passengers were given the option to order lunch, which would be delivered to the train here. I went for the vegetarian curry, priced at just 150 rupees, and it was quite delicious. I'm not sure why, but these switchbacks absolutely fascinate me. The gradients on the Darjeeling line are quite remarkable with some very steep inclines. The maximum gradient on the line is 1 in 18 or 5.5% while a typical railway line usually has a gradient no steeper than 1 in 400 or 0.25%. This one is actually a double loop where we spiral on ourselves nearly a full 720 degrees. Here is the last and longest switchback on the line, which crosses the busy main road. It opened in 1942 to replace an existing spiral loop which had been irreparably damaged by flooding. Some of the coaches lack modern air brakes so staff members manually operate them on steep declines. Yeah. 
The DHR always attracts a significant crowd and it's heartening to see everyone smiling, waving and taking photos of the train. Rangtong village and station stands at the 62 km mark or just over the three quarter point of our journey today. As we arrive in Salbari, we leave the mountainous Himalayas behind and are now at an elevation of just 226 feet above sea level. And the landscape has now changed too, with the steep hillsides being replaced by fields, industry and urbanisation, however the welcoming atmosphere from passers-by remains. As we approach the outskirts of Siliguri, our magnificent journey is quickly coming to an end. In summary, this trip was a major bucket list experience for me and it certainly lived up to and exceeded my expectations. The spectacular engineering, stunning scenery and rich history left me in absolute awe. Despite its lack of comfort and speed, the journey offers a unique opportunity to witness this marvel firsthand. At this point, we join the electrified main line that runs from Siliguri to New Jalpaguri and onwards to Kolkata. An interesting sight to behold here is the crossing of our 2 foot narrow gauge track with the 5 foot 6 broad gauge line at grade. While the train continues for another 8 kilometers to New Jalpagori, we disembark here at the original starting point of the line to explore the town. I do hope you enjoyed this video today, I had great fun making it. To check out my other videos from this part of the world, click the link above now for my India and Sri Lanka playlist. Have you been on any amazing Indian trains before? Which route did you do and how was it? By the way, I'm always open to new video ideas so leave me a comment or a DM on Instagram or Twitter if there's anything you really want to see on the channel. Don't forget to subscribe as I publish a new review every Friday. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.